Hello. Today I'd like to talk to you about the problem of managing multiple recipes for the same item in an applied energistic system. Something that people can run into is they'll have multiple ways to craft an item, but then no way to choose between which recipe they want to use. Today we're going to solve that problem with some storage buses, some export buses, and some level emitters. So over here on our molecular assembly chamber, we've got one recipe in it right now, and that's to craft four empty cells out of four tin ingots. If we look in our storage bus here, we can see we've got both that pattern and a pattern to do an empty cell with a single compressed air cell. We've also got two export buses down here, one with each of those patterns in it. And we've got two level emitters to toggle between those export buses. This level emitter sends a signal whenever there's more than one compressed air cell. And this one sends a signal whenever there's less than one. So when we don't have any compressed air, we'll craft with tin. When we do have compressed air, we'll craft with it. But we've got to have a way to get those recipes back out of our system. And something that I've found is that if you're using the ex excuse me, the import bus, it's actually going to pull all of your patterns out of the molecular assembly chamber. And that's why we had to find a different way to accomplish this. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to use a chest with two export buses pointed at it, basically doing the same thing. One of the big differences that you're going to notice over here, though, is these export buses are set to be active with signal. And these ones are set to be always active, but they're behind a piece of dark cable. And the reason we're using dark cable to separate these buses instead of just activating them with a signal is that we need to be able to reset our crafting in our system. Uh, whenever you add or remove a component from the Applied Energistics Network, it will reset any crafting operations that are pending. Now, if we don't do this, whatever recipe we were just crafting from uh, before we either received or ran completely out of compressed air cells, we'll still be using that recipe until the next craft request is issued. So that's not going to work for us in a case where we're running out of compressed air cells because then we're just going to wait until more compressed air cells come in. By using the dark cable, we reset our system, and then the next craft request for that same item will use our new recipe. So if we look in this chest here, we can see that we've got our compressed air cell recipe, which means that we shouldn't have any compressed air cells in our system. If we add a compressed air cell, then you notice that our, our level emitters there switched, and we should now see that we've got our tin recipe in our system. Okay, so let's check out a practical application of this. Uh, let's say that perhaps you've got a level emitter on your ME export bus, and you want to craft empty cells if you don't have any, or, or just putting empty, empty cells in if you do. Uh, maybe you don't want to set up an automatic processing facility for your compressed air cells, so you just want to go ahead and do it on the fly whenever you need to. Well, let's take a look in here. We're going to pull any empty cells that we might have out and give ourselves a few compressed air cells. So we've got 21 compressed air in here. And let's just take half a stack of cells out and see what happens. So we took half a stack out, so we'd expect this to stop at 53 because we had 21. Uh, and we are using our compressed air cell recipe right now. So, in just a moment here, we'll get to 53. Okay, our recipe just switched, and there we are crafting off of tin. And it would work the same way, um, even if we were crafting from tin, and, and then we uh, got uh, compressed air cells put into our system. So, to check that out, we're going to have to be a little bit quick here. We're going to take all these out, walk back over. We see that we're crafting from tin. Let's give it some compressed air cells. You can see our patterns just switched, and now we're using our compressed air cells. We'll take these back out, and once again, we're using our tin. So, um, it is a little bit complicated. Uh, one final thing to touch on, um, I did use uh, storage priority on these storage buses. This is priority three, and that is to ensure that um, anything that's coming into our system here um, that is one of these two patterns will be placed into our assembly chamber if possible. Um, my disk here is priority two. And then because I have a storage bus over here, this is priority one. And that's to kind of stop uh, anything, you know, from, from coming into here unless it absolutely has to. Uh, we don't expect to be using this storage bus um, to pick up items imported into the network. This chest here um, is really just a receptacle for our export buses. And our storage bus is just so that these export buses will have access to it. Um, so, in, and again, the reason we're doing that is because if I were to put an import bus on the system, it would pull out any pattern, um, any encoded pattern, whereas storage buses and export buses um, 
seem to be looking at the actual NBT data. So, so they are actually identifying what pattern it is uh, and determining whether or not it should come out. So obviously there's other applications for this. Um, perhaps you have a recipe with UU Matter that you could use, or if you have the physical materials, you could use those instead, um, or, or a number of other things. Um, it is a little bit space intensive. Um, you are going to need a minimum of three slots against your, mole your uh, molecular assembly chamber for it. You can, of course, uh, move these down if you've got to get more stuff in there. Uh, these could be placed here instead uh, to save space against the wall of the assembly chamber. Um, and you could put as many chest setups like this as you wanted. Um, if you are going to do this in bulk with lots of recipes, you may want to set up a subnetwork because, of course, do remember that when we are changing our dark cable here, we are resetting all crafting. So if you have other complex crafts that are, that are happening, uh, those will also be reset and need to be restarted. So uh, this would make a, a good candidate for a sub-network uh, where you just manage your, your multiple item crafts. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. And have a great day. Thank you.